you are fully capable of deciding your own destiny. The question you face is, which path will you choose? Hello everyone, so my name is Kyla and I live in Tokyo, Japan. I've lived in Tokyo for about three years now, almost three years, it'll be three years in February. I moved here February 2017 and I feel like every time I meet an old friend or family or even just new people, everyone always has the same questions for me. They always want to know like, why did I move here? How did I move here? A lot of people that I know want to move here. So I thought I would make like a little video kind of talking about my story and maybe some things you can do if you're interested in moving to Tokyo. So uh, to begin with, I was modeling in America and I was scouted uh, in a way because the Tokyo agency that I had came to my agency in America. They requested me to come to a casting. It was me and maybe five other girls, four or five other girls. And they picked me and one other model, so we were very lucky to go. I was super excited to go because it was my first time in Asia, technically my first time overseas. The farthest away I had ever been was Hawaii. So I was very, very excited. I bought a new suitcase. I bought some new clothes. I was just so ready. I was test shooting and getting ready. I was talking to another model that was from my agency who went to the same agency in Tokyo. I asked her about her experience. So I was really, really excited. I actually watched a lot of YouTubers around that time too. I was watching, um, what's her name? I was watching Sharla at the time because she posted a lot about like things to do and all that. Oh, and also Taylor, Taylor R. I feel like I watched those two. Like I watched all of their vlogs. I wrote down everything that they did that I was interested in. I wrote down like all the tips that they had. I was so excited. I was so ready. But anyway, my contract originally was for three months. It was for three months. That's what I was signed for. So my original plan was to come to Tokyo for three months, have fun, meet friends, get work, get money, come home and add some uh, work to my book as well. But at the end of the three months, uh, I wasn't totally ready to go back. I made a lot of friends that still had some time here. Um, I had met Son by that time and I wanted to be with him. Although we weren't officially dating at that time, but I just felt like I didn't want to up and leave yet. I felt like three months just wasn't quite enough. So I extended it to six months. And then on the fifth month, uh, San and I became an official couple. A lot of my friends left, but it was, I felt like it, that was a wrap. Like after about five, six months, that was about a wrap. But I didn't want to go back because now I was dating San. So I decided to take another contract because six months, is the total contract at uh, one time for an entertainment visa, which is what I have. Sorry, I'm like bouncing all over the place. I feel like I'm just telling the story, but I'm missing details here. So I had an entertainment visa, which typically are three months and then you can extend up to six months and then that's it. You have to leave and come back and start again. And it's an unlimited visa. You can get it as many times um, as a company will allow. So anyway, my six months was up. So I went to Hong Kong and Guangzhou, China for one month in each place, which was a very interesting experience. Such crazy experiences over um, in China. Very fun and also very difficult times. But anyway, so after my two months were up, San came to visit me, which also I had an entertainment visa for both of those countries. And then San came to visit me in Hong Kong and uh, we had like a four day vacation. And then I flew back to Tokyo this time on a tourist visa for one month. And I just lived with him in his apartment. I didn't work. It was just like another, this one, I did need this vacation though because I was starting to be very overwhelmed. Um, I did have days off. I did have, well, in China and Hong Kong, in Hong Kong I had more days off. In China, there was only one day off a week. We worked six days a week. And China was just very exhausting. I worked very long hours, like very long hours. Like my longest day there was I believe 14 hours, which was a lot, but normally it's like eight to 10 hours every time. Castings, eight hours of castings every day. Um, sometimes even after your job or before your job, you have castings. It was just a lot, I was exhausted. So when I came back to Tokyo, that one month break was quite nice, just to be able to rest and to be around someone I knew because I had been back to America in what, six, seven, eight months. So I needed a little bit of a break. And then later on, uh, about a month later, I decided I wanted to go back with my original agency that I had before. And they said they had availability. So I went back with them 
and I went to Seoul, South Korea for my first time two years, wait, three years ago, and I got uh, my entertainment visa in Korea. Now, not every nationality can do this, but for me as an American, I was able to go to the Japanese embassy in Seoul and give them all my paperwork and everything that my agency gave me, and they gave me my entertainment visa next day, which is crazy. So it was just super easy. I stayed for a week, had a vacation, got my papers, and the minute I landed in Tokyo, I was on a visa and it was another six months working. And then from there on out, like for the next like two years, Basically, I was on and off an entertainment and a tourist because as a tourist, it's kind of the same thing. You can only stay 90 days, so you have your three months, then you have to leave and you can come back and do another 90 days, but you only have six months total in a country each year. So basically, I would do three months tourist, go on vacation, come back three months tourist, go on vacation, come back six months work, go on vacation. So that's why I've been traveling a lot. I feel like my visas are always up. That's just such a stressful thing. In general, about living in any country that's not your own, you have to jump through so many hoops. Although I've been very lucky because, you know, I have San, I have a place to live. And uh, so it's a lot easier for me. People who don't have connections or friends or, you know, anything like that, I think it would be really difficult to do this. But I've been very lucky and able to do that. But that is definitely one of the reasons why I travel so much. But I do choose to be gone for a longer amount of time because I don't often go back to America. I've only been back once in the last three years and I was only back for two weeks. But I do find myself needing a break from Asia in general because I do go to Seoul a lot too, but Asia is just very different from the West. Culture shock, I don't have it as much anymore, but there are just things that you miss. You miss food and you miss, um, actually today, I went to Dean and DeLuca, got a baguette and got a muffin. Yeah, I just miss like Western food and I miss like the Western attitude, the Western atmosphere, Western clothing. Um, so I do find myself wanting to be gone for like a month at a time, at least three weeks at a time each year to just, you know, soak that in and then come back. Anyway, yeah, so I've only had an entertainment visa and actually right now I'm on a tourist visa. Uh, I just went back to, I went to Korea and came back and they stamped my visa for another three months. And at the end of three months, I'm not totally sure where I'm gonna go. I need to go somewhere though, because my visa's up in March and I have plans to be in New York in May. So maybe I'll just go to Korea again, maybe for a week, come back and then go to America. I don't know. This has been my life for the last three years. But a lot of my other friends uh, that have stayed here and have had like a real, like a Japanese card, like a residence card and all of that. Typically they come here on a school visa or they come here on a working holiday. And unfortunately, if you're American, you can't have a working holiday visa. So most of my friends that have had a working holiday have been from the UK or Australia, but it's a great visa. And uh, if you're under 30 and if you're from the selected countries, you can just come for free for a year and just do whatever you want. I think the longest you can stay is a year and six months. At the end of the year, you'd have to extend for six months and then that's it. You can never get that visa again. It's a one-time visa, so don't waste it if you get it. Definitely just stay here as long as you can. Yeah, that's my whole story. It's basically like been one big accident. Um, I never planned on living here. I just met Son and fell in love and stayed as long as I could and made friends and traveled. My life is completely different now than I ever pictured it would be years ago. Very crazy how things happen. But for all the people that are modeling right now, talk to your mother agency and see you know, where you can go. Ask them what uh, agency connections they have in Asia, in Europe, in South America. Some of my model friends have modeled in um, Mexico, Milan, London, Germany, Seoul, all over China. Models are all over China. It's very easy, I feel, to model in China. But there's so many places out there to model. Do it, I say do it. It's not easy, but uh, if you're gone for two, three months at a time, it's not too bad. And I think you should talk to your agency and see what you can do if you're interested in traveling. To everyone else who is not a model, <laughs> um, if you have a working holiday, I highly recommend taking advantage of that. Even in America, I know we have working holiday for Seoul, New Zealand, I forget what other countries. Um, I know for Seoul, I think you have to already have a bachelor degree in order to qualify. I'm not totally sure, but um, it's worth looking into. Just take advantage of every working holiday you can. Just go work, have fun. You never know what's gonna happen. Other than working holidays, student visas, as far as I understand, aren't that difficult to get. You just have to pay 
quite a bit of money, you know, depending on what school you're going to. So it depends on how much you're willing to spend. Because as far as I know, you can't work on that visa. So I'm not totally sure how you would be making money other than just spending your savings. I'm not, I'm not totally sure, but you have to look into it, I, I suppose. I don't know everything about it. But yeah, working holiday, entertainment visa, student visa, and a company visa, but I feel like that is like a whole nother level and that can be really, um, it's kind of more of a big deal, I feel like. Those are all the visas that I really know about, but wherever you're from, look into it, do it, try it. Um, if anyone needs any advice for moving to Tokyo, uh, I would just say it's not the same as Europe, nowhere near. If you're from Europe, it's so easy to just show up and then you can just, you know, find a place that's, you know, subletting and you can sublet an apartment. It's so simple. Or you can find a roommate uh, easily. And I just feel like it's a lot easier to kind of settle down, to make friends, to start a life. In Tokyo, it's the exact opposite, <laughs> very opposite. Um, if you want an apartment, you have to jump through many, many hoops, pay a lot of money. Uh, most apartments won't even rent to foreigners. So for me, since my boyfriend speaks Japanese, he's not Japanese, he's Korean. So there was one apartment that turned us down because we were foreigners, even though he's fluent and he's lived in Japan for like 12 years. So finally we found one that allowed foreigners, but uh, it took him a lot of searching. We had to go through two different companies um, until we found this apartment, which we've now lived in for about two years. My other friends who had apartments, I'm pretty sure that they reached out to companies who specialized in finding apartments for foreigners. And I'm not sure how much more expensive they are than what we pay and how all of that's set up. But uh, nobody really does roommates in Japan. That's not how it works. Typically you just find the smallest apartment possible and you live by yourself. Nobody does roommates. Um, you could stay at a hostel or stay at an Airbnb. A lot of people think that Airbnb is just so expensive and I can't stay at an Airbnb for like three months. But I feel like you totally can because all your bills are covered and sometimes it actually includes a lot of things. Maybe they can give you um, a pocket Wi-Fi that's included in the price, but you have no other bills. You don't have to pay a key fee, a deposit to move in. So for me, what I would do if I was gonna move to Japan alone by myself, I would totally get an Airbnb. The extra money is completely worth it in my opinion. And also it just kind of depends on where you live and how, uh, how much money you wanna spend going in and out of the city, which can be quite expensive. I feel like travel expenses are insanely high in Tokyo. So just if you could pick it near a, a large station, Shinjuku Shibuya, you'll save a lot of money that way. Other than that, I don't think there's any other advice. I feel like you should just jump in, close your eyes and just jump in. You'll be totally, totally fine. There are massive culture differences. There are a lot of things that might stress you out, confuse you. Even now after three years, there's so many things where I'm just like, why? No matter where I live, there's gonna be issues, right? No matter where anyone lives, there's gonna be issues. I just think, just do it, just try it. Just come for three months, six months. If you plan on staying less than six months, just do it. Just find a place to live first and potentially a job or whatever you wanna do. Um, and just move here, just do it. If you plan on staying over a year, maybe do some more research, maybe visit a couple of times before you dive in, but you'll be fine even if you do. One year may feel like a lot, but I feel like one year goes by a lot faster than you think it does. And uh, yeah, I think that's my whole story. And as far as the future goes, um, I don't plan on living in Tokyo forever. I think San and I will live here one to two more years. I think two years more is the max. And then we will be moving to Seoul and San will be basically part-time in both countries because he's a photographer and a lot of his clients and business is here. And uh, so as he makes the transition to Seoul, he'll be going back and forth for a while, but I will be in Seoul. Hopefully, you know, going to school, teaching, living my best life, maybe a little bit of modeling. I'm not sure. I'm so ready to quit. I swear I've tried to quit so many times and I just keep doing it again. So eventually, eventually, but that's it. That is my story of living in Tokyo. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave questions below if you have any and um, good luck. Bye.